My name is Danica, and today I have my January wrap-up. I'm back, trying to make semi-regular videos at least once a month. I can do that. I haven't done a monthly wrap-up video in a while, and I used to really like them. I liked having them on my channel so that I had some kind of record of what I've been reading and what I thought of them. But first, a general life update, which is that I finished my first teaching contract. Very exciting. I was teaching all boys, all athletes, and I was teaching English 11 and 12, and it was challenging, it was a great learning experience, but I got through it and that is great, that is exciting. So now I'm going in a bit of a different direction, I will let you know about that next video when it's official. Book-wise, I do the All the Books podcast, that is a Book Riot podcast, and I co-host it with Liberty, so Liberty does it every week, and then we have a rotating cast of co-hosts that accompany her every week because you have to read four books for each podcast and only Liberty can keep up with that kind of pace every week. So basically, since I think I've started the podcast, almost all of my reading has been for all the books, which means I am reading so much front list, so many new releases, which isn't at all how I used to read, but now I'm doing new release videos for the Book Riot YouTube channel, I'm doing all the books, and I am also requesting a lot of arcs, and after I have read and review them and after the book is out I often give those arcs away on my patreon so I am reading a lot of arcs as well so almost a hundred percent of my reading is now frontless new releases and I'm not doing a lot of spontaneous reading which I miss I think I just gotta step it up I gotta be reading more to keep up with this kind of schedule because I want to be reading other books like I don't know the books on my shelf that I've owned for five to ten years and never read you know Maybe some of those. <laughs> anyway, I read five books this month and they were all new releases and four out of the five were for the podcast. This is why I'm hoping to read a little more than five books a month so that I can read more books that aren't just for the podcast. Although I pick books that I'm interested in for the podcast, I want to be able to read books that aren't just out in the first week of the month because that's my time slot. So weirdly, like all of my reading is now just books that are released on the first Tuesday of the month, which is a very arbitrary thing to be guiding most of your reading choices. So four out of the five of these came out on February 2nd. I read them in January to prepare for that podcast. They are very good and I recommend them, but there were so many great books that were out February 2nd. It was a cornucopia. Now I'm trying to pick ones for the March episode and they're just not speaking to me. I'm having a lot more trouble this time. So the first book that I read for the podcast was Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. I will have a link to my full Lesbury review Review, which will be much more coherent than this is. This was a very intense reading experience. I'm going to start off with some content warnings, not just for the book, but also my discussion of the book. So warnings for disordered eating, self-loathing, internalized homophobia, but especially a lot of talk about weight and eating disorders. So I found myself reading this book compulsively. I kept coming back to it. I definitely read this book when I meant to be sleeping. I kept getting pulled back to it. And it's because I felt completely immersed in Rachel's mind, which was not the best place to be because she is very self-loathing, but there's also this great dry humor to it, and I loved the writing, but I also found it so compelling because I am someone who definitely has worked through a lot of body image issues and a lot of disordered thoughts around food. So it's funny, the premise of this book is basically that Rachel, who is so incredibly controlling of her body and who is always carefully counting calories and staying thin all the time and just obsessive about food but won't allow herself to eat enough. So she ends up falling for this fat woman and she has this weird relationship with this other woman who basically embodies Rachel's greatest fear of gaining a lot of weight but she also thinks that she's beautiful and she is drawn to her and she falls in love with her. So it's this push and pull internally for her and she's also repressing her sexuality. She is queer but she doesn't really 
want to face that. And I felt like the way that Rachel thinks about Miriam is kind of the way that I felt about Rachel reading this book in that in some ways I feel really drawn to that idea of being very in control and being in control of your body and being so structured and rigid. So in some ways Rachel is my fear for myself of becoming like that, but I also find it really compelling and I'm really drawn to it. So it's very strange to be immersed in that and it felt kind of unhealthy, but at the same time it was a cathartic read because Rachel does find this new relationship to food. She's slowly working through some of those issues. So this is a book I found immersive and compelling and raw. It had me almost in tears multiple times. There's a lot to this. There's also her really intense mother issues and her repressed sexuality and I haven't really mentioned Miriam as a character. So you can read my review for a little bit more but that was my experience reading this was just this kind of moth to a flame like destructive immersion in this book that I think pays off in the end. I did feel like it was a cathartic experience coming to the end of it. It was a very personal, intense reading experience. The next book I read was also for all the books, and I also have a review of The Lesbury that I will link below, and that is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This is a polyamorous, queer, Dracula's Bride retelling. I highly recommend going into this without a lot of prior knowledge. Do be prepared for depictions of unhealthy and abusive relationships, as well as gore. This is kind of a meditative look at this relationship so it's hard to talk about it without giving things away. It doesn't even become a polycule until like halfway through the book. This is an MFFM polycule and all of the main characters are bisexual or pansexual. This is from the point of view of Constanta who is Dracula's first bride, though the word Dracula isn't actually in this book at all. He saved her while she was dying on a battlefield and she is overwhelmingly in love with him and she also kills him within the first few pages of the book and then we backtrack and see how she got to this point. So although this is a vampire novel with a lot of gore and sex scenes, it's really about Constanta reflecting on this abusive relationship with this captivating person and although it's vampires, the depiction of an abusive relationship felt all too realistic. He's very controlling and possessive, but if you want a bisexual polyamorous vampire book that is also thoughtful and atmospheric, I highly recommend A Dowry of Blood. Next is Love is an Ex Country by Randa Girard, and again, I have the Lesbian Review linked in the description. This is a memoir that is about what it's like to be a queer, fat Arab woman in the US. It's told in kind of vignettes of her life. This is a book that requires a lot of trigger warnings. She talks about harrowing details of her own abuse, including domestic abuse, physical abuse by her father, and reproductive coercion. Version. This left me with a lot to think about. Again, it's all in the review that I linked. I'm not really sure how to talk about it concisely because there are a lot of things going on here. I really liked her thoughts on BDSM as a way to reclaim her sexuality and as a way to have really clear boundaries and be able to participate in sexuality on her own terms. She also talks about the complexities of being white passing and what that means to her and she talks about trying to visit Palestine as a Palestinian American and the ridiculous and sometimes terrifying hoops that you have to jump through and the chance that you're just going to be turned away for no reason at all by another country. So she talks a lot about really horrific things, about the abuse that she's gone through, about how racism and misogyny underpin American society. But it's also hopeful in a way. She's also proud to be a fat queer Arab woman and she has survived and she is unafraid to speak her mind. So if you want a memoir that is thoughtful and challenging, I would recommend probably reading this slowly. There are a lot of ideas and it reads almost like an essay collection. I think this would benefit from giving you a little bit of time to process as you read it. Then I would recommend Love is the Next Country. And the last book I read for the All the Books podcast is not at the Lesbury, it's my only straight one on this list, I think. And that is A Taste for Love by Jennifer Yen. This is 
is a fun YA rom-com that blends elements of Pride and Prejudice with a Chinese baking show in the style of The Great British Bake Off. Liza's mom runs an annual baking competition for teenagers and this time around Liza is not allowed to participate because that would look like favoritism but she is allowed to help judge and when she gets there the first day she finds out that one her mom has just selected Asian teenage boys as the participants and two that her mom is offering baking classes with Liza as a reward. So basically her mom has set this up as her own dating show for her daughter to try to set her up with a respectable boyfriend. This gave me the vibes of like a Netflix teen movie which I totally mean as a compliment. It was just really fun and absorbing. It is also guaranteed to leave you with food cravings. They describe the baking in detail. They're always going for boba tea and now I want boba tea but I can't go anywhere right now and it's very frustrating because I just want some boba tea. I also liked how the Pride and Prejudice elements were reimagined in a way that fits really well with this story. So if you like rom-coms, Pride and Prejudice retellings, or shows like The Great British Bake Off, you should give A Taste for Love by Jennifer Yen a try. And the book that I read that wasn't for the podcast but is a new release is The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp. This is a YA thriller. It is about a teenage girl who was raised by her con artist mother and had to participate in these schemes when she was growing up, but her mother fell for one of the marks and Nora had to escape to keep herself safe and now she's trying to live a normal life kind of in disguise with her older sister but she has a more immediate problem and that's that she is currently being held hostage in a bank robbery with her girlfriend and her ex-boyfriend. This is action-packed and brutal. There are so many trigger warnings for this. So warnings for rape and child abuse and gore and a lot of violence and blood. This kind of flashes back and forth between the current hostage situation and Nora's previous lives. So she had to kind of live as these different characters in her mother's cons and you get to see all of these stories and what they taught her and her trying to use these skills to get them out of this situation. She has been trying to keep that part of her life a secret and that's actually why her boyfriend broke up with her is because he found out that she was hiding this whole secret life and they remained friends but with the understanding that she wouldn't lie to him anymore except that he just walked in on her and Iris her girlfriend kissing and he didn't know about that so she was lying to him again and it is a very awkward social situation to be stuck with the two of them and meanwhile her ex-boyfriend is trying to get her to tell her girlfriend about her previous lives and the truth about her situation. I loved this book so much it is so fast paced. I also really love the characters, especially Iris, her girlfriend. She is very memorable and definitely holds her own. She loves fashion. She wants to be an arson investigator. She is fearless enough that they can't play truth or dare anymore because she will just do anything on a dare even if it is life-threatening. I really liked Nora and Iris's relationship even though Iris is angry at Nora throughout this book because she finds out that she's being lied to. They have a really solid foundation for their relationship. She also has endometriosis, Iris, which isn't something I've seen represented in a book before and the note in the back says this is own voices representation and it really talks about what that actually looks like from day to day and how she is trying to get through this really horrific situation while she is in an extraordinary amount of pain. So this is a fast-paced thriller that is about misogyny and power and abuse. It's hard to enthusiastically recommend a book that is so much about child abuse but I loved this. I thought it was so well done. If you are a fan of thrillers that don't shy away from darkness and violence then I think that you would like this as well and that's The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp. And those were all the books that I read in January. If you have watched all the way to the end let me know what your favorite book was that you read this month. And if you don't feel like leaving a whole comment leave me a little knife emoji for The Girls I've Been. And and thank you for watching.